Good Thursday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and motorcycles, SUVs, the dogs, the attitudes, the weather, the pond. Yeah, look at that pond. Beautiful. It is so incredibly beautiful here today. It is. You think you're in Florida. I think I'm overdressed. Wow. I mean, can you recall winters? Does this area have actually have winters? When's last time in winter? Hey, good morning there for everybody who watched my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Ah, uh, the morning conversation as we get the day going. Get a little late start. Boy, this kind of holiday festivities makes you think you can just kind of be, I guess, in the uh, the holiday spirit, I guess, because uh, I'm getting a late run, but it's not a big deal because I'm trying to keep it a fun holiday week. And as always, about the cars and trucks and motorcycles and other things and the antics of my life and come on puppies but it's so warm out i am truly overdressed in some ways you guys are gonna start wearing a hat to recognize each product of what i own so today's the triumph today's the triumph uh, paraphernalia and the word recall the verb the action word today is recall because i thought to myself that's a great conversation, and what spurred it was, my Triumph Indian dealer here reached out to me yesterday and said, hey, I didn't even know they did this, we have that new rear master cylinder recall for your Triumph Rocket 3R. Yes, apparently there's a major recall on my Triumph Rocket, and how appropriate could it be but to take that word recall, and come on, Pops, what are you doing? So these dogs are eating, stop it, don't eat that, hey, I don't know. Oh, it just doesn't end. And we got Kiefer. I mean, Kiefer's kind of acclimating to this stuff. I don't know what they're doing. Come on, get away from that. Get away from that. What are you eating? Come on, get over here. Scout, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. So, come on. What are you guys eating? Hey, Kiefer, let's go. Come on. Get in the bar. Come on. Yeah, he's kind of getting more attuned to the program, the routine, thank goodness. As I get these dogs in the barns, you see what happens. I get distracted, so the, re the word recall, I think, is so appropriate because I'm trying to recall all the purchases of all these vehicles that I made this past year, and that's challenging to kind of break it down to each vehicle, each month, what did I trade, what did I get, I mean, wow. So, dogs got to go in, got to get the light on, and got to get my barn opener out of my pocket so I don't start having that go everywhere and ah oh, geez got to get the brain working yeah there it is the rocket 3r come on let's go come on take your toy upstairs good boy you got it come on you know the team no no take that with you you fall now he's gonna want to freaking uh harass ginger okay here's your toy here's the game here you go come on get there come on get there ginger. no that didn't work out very well did it come on ginger let's go come on get up here come on everybody here here boy come on come on Get it, get it, go get a crunch in go, 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 go. Hey, hey, give her. See, it's that girl. Stop it. It's the girl dog dominance. Get out of there. Hey, stop it. Yeah, see that dog, it's incredible what those two do. <laughs> Jesse Kiefer, he's a handful. It ain't easy having all these dogs. You see what goes on. It's the girl, not dog. And it's all about the dominance. The German Shepherd wants to be the dominant one, but the little girl, she's the boss. Who doesn't know these stories, right? Lights, camera, action, and uh, get the conversation going. It's so warm out. And last night, I wiped down this breakout because yesterday was that rainy day. And I recall, <laughs> here goes the recall conversations. I've had so many Hurleys in this shop. And it's just concrete floor that's porous. Concrete's porous. So it just sucks up all the moisture and water. And what it does, any vehicle you have in my shop, it's not a dry environment. So for Harley Davidson, even my Hummer, I had an H2 Hummer years ago, custom, chrome wheels, all the chrome just starts getting destroyed because it's such a moist environment. And anybody would ask me, I'm going to buy a motorcycle and I want to buy the chrome dial package, I'd say if you're really smart, you get the black dial package. I haven't had the same challenge on the black uh, coated um, engines 
and bars, you know, mufflers, wheels, the list goes on and on and on. The chrome ones, they truly, the, the chrome is so cheap. Everybody knows that this chrome over the years isn't the, has the highest quality. And so last night I literally wiped this whole bike down because if I didn't, it would just begin the process of this motorcycle uh, start to show pitting in the uh, in the chrome. You see the you see the picture of a guy's Harley in his living room. There's a reason for that. I would be one of those guys if I didn't have a big shop and I had a little house and I didn't have a, a garage per se because if you leave your Harley out in the environment with chrome, oh my gosh. So the whole point of that is uh, guys would park their uh, Harleys inside their house to protect it because it's a dry environment. But another trick that I've learned is, because this garage, once again, like yesterday, everything was just coated with moisture. And I wiped a lot of stuff down. Um, but with another trick I learned is a trailer. Trailer is your best garage if you have capability to have a space. Because these um, trailers, they're, they're off the ground. So it's a dry environment. It's a much better environment for the motorcycles. And once again, it's more about the chrome motorcycles. And as I say, I've had so many Harley Davidsons with the chrome package, and it's just really sad. Even my Indian, even the Indians, I've seen it. And I had a really cool fire engine red H2 Hummer back in like 2005 that was all customized and supercharged. I mean, that thing was just badass. So, anyways, the whole point of that is those wheels totally were destroyed from being in my garage. And Criswell Chevrolet was so cool, they actually replaced all those wheels. <laughs> Even though they could have called me out saying, well, man, where are you parking this thing? And then the next running joke is, if you have a pool and you have chlorine and you store your chlorine in your garage, you're a fool. Especially if you have a motorcycle within reason of that chlorine having any type of uh, leakage or even the air, it'll just destroy your motorcycle. And so you say, well, yeah, you got chlorine over here. I sure do with the bucket is sealed. But those are those tablets, which didn't even use that. So the recall conversation all came from this right here. This apparently has a rear, I think I, I, think I read it right, a rear master cylinder um, recall. And so today, I'm going to drive this down to the dealership. And what's really cool is I can drop this off. Then I can bring my Challenger, Indian Challenger, back home so it gets some really good riding time because it's a beautiful day. And then when that's done, I can go back down with my daughter and we'll pick up the uh, Triumph and bring it back home. So the recall conversations, we recall, once again, it's, it's taking a word of the day and trying to give you the entertainment of my addiction to all these cars and trucks and motorcycles. Yesterday I was talking about how, um, if I recall correctly, I was talking about the Ford you look at me, it's all about the Ford. Look, one Ford truck, number two Ford truck, number three Ford truck, number four Ford truck, number five Ford truck, the uh, dually over there, six, six Ford trucks. And I'm probably missing one somewhere, and I don't even realize it, but so six Ford trucks. I used to have two Ram trucks. In comparison to the, uh, the one Ram, that I have in the comparison to the one Mojave, which that's a really great vehicle for what we do with it and work out of it. So yeah, it's all about the Ford product, which so many years ago, if you recall, I would tell you there's no way I would have ever been the Ford guy that I am. And what's happened to the Raptor 37 is it's idly sitting, you know, I put about a thousand miles on that thing and I just kind of like, ah, eh, I gotta park it. And I've been doing other things, and there's a Raptor R in down at Goon Sterling Ford. Guy sent me a picture of it. It doesn't look very good. I don't know what. It just doesn't really pop out, and it's a carbonized gray color. And I'm just like, eh, this isn't very exciting. So, so now, if I recall correctly, of reading information, the last Dodge Challenger and Charger scat packs were built on December 22nd. So up there at Bram Brambleton, um, near Ontario, Canada, the Brambleton uh, plant where they build all these Dodge cars, December 22nd was the last day of production. Apparently, 
The last official car was a black 170 Demon, was the official last car with, I think, a 300 behind it, the Chrysler 300 behind it. But here's what's interesting. This article, I just read this this morning. Apparently, this came out yesterday in the uh, Car and Driver or Motor Trend Magazine, whatever it may be. But the, uh, the, the article talks about the replacement Charger Challenger is going to be probably just one car for the immediate future. But it says it's going to be electric and six-cylinder um, the hurricane motor setup in line six. So did you just hear what I said? So Dodge, apparently, now is this factual? So they're saying that the gas engine is going to stay in the next generation um, Dodge Charger. So everybody thinks that Dodge has abandoned the gas engine. They haven't. Which that's why I started thinking to myself about my Hellcats was, wow, what if, I mean, here's the thing. I know most people are like, so what if they brought an inline six um, twin turbo setup that had 700 horsepower. I don't want the inline six, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, why? Why wouldn't you take that? That'd be a badass uh, setup. That'd be a fast car. How do you know it's not going to be all-wheel drive? There's so many things that could play out with that next generation. I don't know. You know, so all of a sudden, um, the thought process that this is the last run of this car being um, available and no more ice now, I have to honestly say that uh, that's all incorrect. And I could swear, if I recall correctly, I thought that Kim, Tim Kaniskas unveiled that, that uh, Dodge Charger Banshee. And the whole heyday of it was it's all electric. And that was going to be the whole next uh, flavor of Dodge, all electric. But it seems to be waning, and it seems to be they're hearing that people don't want it. So I guess the next generation Dodge Charger that you're looking at here is the, now the previous generation. No longer can order have one built. I guess that that's going to be a gas engine setup. And, that, and then once again, I don't I mean for me, in the end of the day, I think the Challenger always will be the more sought after um, vehicle. And the Charger will always have its presence. But I really think that the uh, Challenger will always be the iconic real retro looking car the charger doesn't by any means the charger is a two-door car the charger doesn't have any really retro look to it charger is just a great looking car and it started in 2004 and it's incredible how in 2005 i had a silver srt um setup and i had it for about i don't know about a year or so i think and but then after that i didn't have another one until like 2000 um I guess 15, if I'm correct. So I had about a 10 year, I, I lost Mopar. I lost all my performance stuff from the 2000 years when I went through incredibly um, challenging times of going through a bankruptcy. So back in 2008, I, for the most part, lost everything. And what's uh, something I tell you is, you know, each law, I talk about this on my channel, and each state and law has different um, ways of how they look at you and how they treat you. And in the state of Virginia, they have what's called spousal protection. So if somebody watched my channel, like I said, I guarantee if I posted the video, um, I filed bankruptcy, but then once the video started playing, I said, yeah, I filed bankruptcy in 2008. But if I posted the video, I filed bankruptcy, and everything was to go south on me, and all my cars would be taken away, and, and you know, it's called liquidation. Well, whether well, you realize it or not, um, the house, since my wife's name's not house, if I outright own that house and it's worth a million dollars and I owed so many million dollars, they can't force the sale of this house to pay that debt. Only way that changes is if my wife was on any documents that were actually part of the bankruptcy, her being that she had um, was involved in what created the bankruptcy. So if her name was on other items like that for the house, it's a, it's a separate clause, so they can't touch it. Now, have they changed that law? I don't know. Is it possible? Florida has that as well. I doubt they changed the law, but just some information. When you uh, get married, or you're with some of your relationship, now if we go over the state line just five miles from my house here to Maryland, it all changes. That doesn't exist. You as a married individual, you're one. You're elected as one. Whatever happens to your spouse 
doesn't matter if you sign documents or not. And I could not, I'm not the lawyer, I'm not the expert, but my understanding is, like in Maryland, you're looked at as one. So you don't get that spousal protection, even though you weren't involved in it. So uh, just something, if I recall my information. But the whole point of this really was how I had such a collection of cars through the, the, the really the late 90s, the 2000 years, up to 2008. <clears throat> I had a ton of trucks and cars and didn't have motorcycles, but I had the um, night edition SRT10 um, Viper uh, truck. I had two of those at one time, the stick shift and then the four-door automatic, which really sucked. I had Hummers. I had a Z06 Corvette. I didn't have as many cars back then. I never had this many cars. I always, I always had a good eight, always had a good six, eight, sometimes 10 vehicles. Never, never the collection that I've had now in recent times. So point of that is I lost from 2008 and really until it was like seven years. Remember, bankruptcy is on your record for like seven years. So it really wasn't until like 2015 that I was able to start having access to credit again per se, to start really kind of buying things again. But I did. I mean, I started reestablishing my credit back like in 2012 and 13. Very challenging. <laughs> Once you go through a bankruptcy, it's very challenging to get any, any bank to give you any money. You've got to, you got to know some people to get things done, which I did, and that kind of helped me get some cars, but it's very challenging. So anyways, I lost the whole Mopar, and even my friends like, what a bummer, man. The 2008 Retro Dodge Challenger is coming back, and... You're, and I knew back at that time that I would not be able to get one because I was going down the toilet with my financial uh, havoc of my world of a business I owned that I didn't even need to start, but I was so foolish I did, but we all learned those mistakes too. So on the recall, I mean, it's incredible how all these cars and motorcycles, um, do you recall all the features on them? And me being such a car addict and motorcycle addict, that is challenging. When sometimes I get in my car, I get on a motorcycle, and it's like you have to recall some of the features and settings that these things have. And but then at the same time, the cars today they recall who you are because you can program the seats um, to remember. You know, memory you have you have memory options. But it's very interesting though. Like in this car here, and that car over there, you'll have like the memory seat option. But then you go to a little lower level trim model and you won't get the, uh, the recall uh, seat memory position. For anybody out there that has a spouse or a kid and you're sharing cars, you know, well as, you know just as well as I do. If you have that recall feature, that's a huge, huge blessing because the odds are you and your wife don't sit the same way in the vehicle <laughs> or your kid or whoever may be you're sharing your vehicle with who has who doesn't know this who doesn't know this aggravating experience oh it just irritates the heck out of me when i get one of my cars and somebody has sat in it and they've readjusted the mirrors outside mirrors readjusted the seats been readjusted the inside rear view mirrors readjusted and you're just like ah. and then you try to recall how you kind of had the whole vehicle set up to your comfort where you really felt um, really comfortable in that car, where the mirrors are set correctly, your vision over the steering wheel, the steering wheel column, even the steering wheel column. And they even changed that. Oh my gosh, it's just like, ah. So I'm very fortunate. I don't have, we're not all sharing cars together every day, but in some days, yes. But I have the memory, the memory seat options, but I didn't have it in that Ford white Mustang. I don't think this Mustang has it either. So every time I get in that car, and it's not in this Dodge Challenge either. So every time I go to move these cars around, my daughter has readjusted all the seats. And it's like, ah, geez, man. It's like, what a drag. Because i got to push the seat way back to get in. Because she sits up so much closer. So, but you know, but that's so. It's the recall feature. And, and yeah, so who doesn't know about the recalls? I mean, anymore, what manufacturer doesn't have recalls? I mean, the recalls are through the roof. <laughs> I mean, more than ever. And we all know why is all this damn technology, all the technology in these cars. It's so much stuff. It's just inevitable that there's something that's going to malfunction and create a recall. Look at Elon Musk with Tesla, where he's had to be uh, called out on a recall on all his full self-driving uh, feature. I can drink my uh, coffee here, so... And get my mustache all browned up. I noticed that when I watch my videos... How my mustache, the morning time, 
goes from uh, being pretty clean, and, and then by the time I'm drinking my coffee, it gets all like brown, like, oh, geez. Do I get rid of the mustache? You have no idea. I just was never the beard mustache guy. The kid kind of, if I recall correctly, the kid two summers ago got me on the uh, on the grow the mustache and beard routine. So, uh, so anyways, the recalls, who hasn't had, and, 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 and who... Who ignores the recalls? I mean, who hasn't had the situation where you're just like, yeah, I'm just sick of it. I don't want another damn recall. You have to take your car to dealership, sit around, have them fix it. Or during the pandemic, they didn't have all the parts. And even this, I think, I think the Mustang Dark Horse just had a recall on something to do, I think, with the brake pedal. I think the brake pedal would, like, come off or something. I can't even remember. But my car, I looked up the VIN number. And my VINs on my cars didn't match those uh, the recall, so I'm not really per se worried about it. Or should I be? As I press down on the brake, and the brake pedal breaks, and I can't stop the car. As I'm having my fun of hearing the exhaust note, and yeah, so can anybody recall? Anybody here recall their first uh, real car? I mean, because I think everybody can. I think anybody that's such the car enthusiast, I'd be one to bet. You can kind of re recall exactly kind of what made that car so special to you. Like my 71 Q to 340, 355 Posi rear. I mean, I can sort of remember getting that car and just how it drove and how it sounded and how the pistol grip felt and how the clutch felt and how the car felt. I mean, I can just still, and yeah, compared to what I have today, that thing drove like a piece of junk in so many ways because these cars are so now refined and of course i had a car that was used in 1980 i guess it was 83 i bought that car so that car was like 12 years old and i can't remember how many miles i can't recall how many miles from that car so but back to the cars these cars now with all the technology in them they recall everything you do <laughs> yeah the black box yeah who wants to have to have that uh subpoenaed and subpoenaed blah blah or whatever if you're in a major car crash that black box is going to recall all your actions and speeds to, and you know, really self-incriminate yourself, which is, uh, ooh, yikes, right? For your antics of uh, what you're doing. So these cars now, they recall where, um, you know, if you have the adaptive cruise control for me, which I use that all the time, um, that's pretty cool because the car rec recalls once you step on the brake to then when you reset it, it goes back to whatever setting you had. It's kind of mundane, but whatever. So so on the recall, here's some uh, things to think about on the, uh, the the motorcycles. I mean, for me, I just have a variable valve timing motor, and it's Harley. And I just have this gut instinct that this will be a recall. I don't know why that is. I just, I just think I'm... And I really even thought buying this first year out, 121 motor, I just had this feeling like... I think I'll be the guinea pig. But for me, was I the guinea pig for the Indian pursuit? I mean, think about that. I mean, that was very challenging. And some would be like, well, Harley would never give you the type of respect they gave you on that Indian pursuit. And that's a great thing that I just brought up is the Indian pursuit still hasn't gone down. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's the holidays. It'll be next. It'll be, it'll be, I bet you, the first or second week of January before that whole thing is maybe finally put to bed. But for, for for Indian, are they going to do a recall on these Indian pursuits? I mean, I'm not that deep into it, so do I think they should? Well, you know, which, once again, you don't hear much about it. I mean, you hear about it, but it just seems like a lot of people, when I was really talking about that Indian pursuits problem, it seemed like so many other Indian um, owners of the pursuit, it just seemed like so many of them kind of came back with uh, that they kind of got the problem fixed. And I don't know. But at the same time, I just have this, if I recall, just all the conversations that I've heard from different people. But what's interesting is there's another pursuit down at the dealership that has the same problem mine has. But, and I'm just trying to recall a conversation with uh, Pete, my good friend down there. And, and the gentleman that owns this pursuit, it's now, it's like a year old, and it has like... 12,000 miles on it and he's experiencing this uh, the wobble and so they're now going back and forth with Indian to try to resolve the problem well 
One thing the guy did is he put meat hangers, he put the high-rise bars on the pursuit. So already Indians called him out saying, well, those, those high-rise meat hangers, whatever you want to call them, that there in itself could be what's creating the problem. But I told uh, Pete, my friend, I said, could you even imagine that if I just kind of really didn't address this issue and this Indian pursuit, and I just kind of kept on riding the bike, and I let time pass, do you really think they'd buy his bike back? I don't think they would. So I would say for this gentleman that's down there, that bike's been sitting down there being worked on for months, <laughs> just so you know. They've done the tire, the wheel, they've taken apart the head. I mean, they've done everything that they did with mine. And I'm like, I, I can't see how this guy's going to get anywhere with Indian. Because you had the bike too long, just like me. And we're, <laughs> in so many ways, I'm blessed because I rode that bike 250 miles right out of the gate of buying that motorcycle. And could you imagine if I just would have parked that Indian Pursuit and only drove it a little bit and then I, and it just parked. And now you're going into next year and then like next spring, I'm like, oh my gosh, my Indian Pursuit has this major flaw and problem, blah, 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 blah. And I would have to say that Indian would probably be like, okay, you bought the bike September last year. You're just now bringing this issue to us and it's now eight months later or six months later. And so for me, you know, being the devil's advocate here, I would instantly be like, how do we know this guy didn't run this thing into a curb? How do we know this guy didn't do something to this motorcycle that has created this problem? And so I'm sure Indian, I know I would, I'd be like, dude, you, you, you've waited this long to address this issue. This should have been something that you talked to us about right out of the gate. This should have been, an, you know, you should have been contacting and you should have been riding that bike or whatever it may be. So the whole point is, I don't think that many Indian owners that have these pursuits that are now more cognizant of this issue um, are going to have much luck with Indian like I did because they're going to have year old bikes. I mean, we are not. I'm on the Indian Motorcycle Forum and there's another guy that literally follows me. He watches my YouTube channel. He may be watching right now. And he has Indian Pursuit. He got his last summer. It was like last fall because I tried to get one at the end of August of 2022 last year. And the whole thing, that, you know, it's the pursuit of happiness turned into the pursuit of unhappiness, which turned into the pursuit of owning more Harleys once again in my life. And so that gentleman has kind of stayed in touch in the forum and he has a new pursuit, which has this problem. And he's very concerned because he wants to do a, a big road trip on that bike with his wife on the back. And now he's very concerned. But here's the thing. And that's what I say. See, this is what's so interesting about that Indian pursuit is I only noticed that by being a certain speed. And if I really wasn't just doing, you know, for myself, being really in tune with the bike, I can honestly say a lot of these guys that own these bikes, they're probably to a degree of oblivious to that their Indian pursuit has a problem because the higher speeds. But for me, you know, I ride so many different style motorcycles and I can just kind of get in tune with the motorcycle. And so like the Honda Goldwing, it's, it's a different ride, different feel. I just haven't gone into a lot of depth on that with that mono shock steering head, which a lot of people called out on Honda saying that's a, that's a flaw design. You're going to get the death wobble out of these things. There, there were reports when these things first came out that people were getting like the death wobble out of that front end. I never experienced that, but there were some stories of that on that motorcycle. So anyways, the whole point is I could just feel that Indian Pursuit uh, maneuver itself. It was just weird. It would just be weird how the bike at 60 miles an hour would just make a lane, make a, like a lane shift on you. Not like it went into the narrow lane, but the bike just seemed that something just wasn't right. And that's why I can only hope that Indian comes to the table with my money and picks that thing up at Motorcycle to Dallas and puts it to bed. I mean, because uh, that's, uh, if I recall correctly, the gentleman that I read the email to, Jeremy, he mentioned here the uh, other week. But you know what? I reached out to him and I said, hey, you should be paying my insurance bill for that bike and my personal property tax bill on that bike. And his response was, Indian really doesn't do all that. You're really pushing yourself. I'm like, yeah, well, I can only hope this is more of a message to you. Just put the freaking thing to bed. Got to get motivated to put my, uh, all my gold strike, gold strike stuff. Here's my Husky 
um, mud flap things. You know, just uh, always the projects. Look at this here. Why does this have stickers on the rear lenses still? Why didn't they take those off? Is that, I mean, wouldn't that, shouldn't that come off there? I mean, hey, who's in the PDI department at Motorcycles of Dulles? You guys need to uh, get your act together here. So, all right, let's get upstairs. I've walked around enough, and it's all about the recall. Yeah, oh, well, let's really, well, let's stop for a second here, because true recall. What can I recall buying um, this past year? And that was really kind of the conversation, really, was what if I, if I can recall what I did. It was unfortunate is things are gone. So that blue Indian Super Chief Limited that I drove over to Orlando, Florida in my uh, Bronco, my Cactus Gray Bronco in January of this past year. And my daughter and dad drove the race truck with this um, trailer that I had just bought. And I bought this trailer because when I was down in Florida, for whatever stupid reason, I got on this stupid, crazy idea of buying all these motorcycles used, and I picked up in December, um, a year ago, a used CVO um, Road Glide and a used Chief Bobber. So I bought this trailer because I knew that going back home, I needed something to uh, get the, uh, the bikes back, and I needed a trailer. So I bought a trailer. And so anyways, the kid and the daughter... Um, the kid, my dad and the daughter took the race truck over to near Orlando, Florida to Big Sky Motorsports and I picked up a Super Chief Limited Indian and that was the first purchase of 2023. So then I don't think I bought anything, but I may, when I came back, I would say the odds are, I think I bought the Honda Rebel 1100 and the Honda Fury I think, like in January or February, the yellow banana bike and the Rebel 1100 uh, DCT bagger bike. I think so. That I think that's like three purchases. But then, but the car thing kind of timed out. But then I think you go to like February or March, and I'm pretty sure I bought the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And keep in mind, those other purchases for the Honda motorcycles. You know, what did I trade in for that? And that's where it kind of gets complicated. Okay, so now the Greek Jeep Grand Cherokee, I bought that with no trade. And I, I got that for the wife. And and then there's no Jeep Wagoneer over there because the wife's in, it in Tennessee with it. But that there I had to trade. But that was later in the ball game. That was more like in, I think, May, if I remember right. And that involved me selling my Cactus Gray Bronco and my gold rush challenger to get that wagoneer deal done to just uh, that's there's a lot to that story too much to talk about um so we've got the i'd have to say the three motorcycles the jeep is four and then then i think i bought the mojave this is number five um and then i bought the um the uh, smoke show challenger and that's like six but i don't think that we trade anything so i don't what oh we traded the ford maverick red truck with the bullhorns for the jeep but the smoke show what did i give up see i mean it's very challenging for me to recall stuff without going to my own youtube channel and start looking at every video to figure out you know what all played out throughout the year so, I mean, even for me, just talking to you right now and having to keep all the numbers, which I'm not going to even count the numbers, it's getting, it get too complicated. And we'll just have to continue the conversations um, as I talk. But as I look at the vehicles, I can kind of more be in tune what's going on. So, I bought a Ford Raptor 35 pickup truck, black, and I only kept it for like a month or two, only to turn around and to buy this Power Boost. So you probably remember that um, video. I used to have a Ford Ranger Tremor truck, which I took and traded to buy the Ford F-250 Carly Package Tremor um, truck used. I sold my Cactus Gray uh, Ford Bronco to get the Jeep Wagoneer, only to turn around to uh, to turn around a week later to buy this black Bronco Raptor. And then just to keep Bronco to Bronco. 
And then I bought, as you know, just here recently, the Bronco Wild Track, which I gave up from that white Mustang. Um, I bought this Mustang GT, if I remember correctly, with no, with no trade. I didn't have to trade anything if I remember. Yeah, I don't know if that's right or wrong. What did I trade for that GT? See, this is where, you know, recall my memory. Yeah, it's just so much information. Uh, and then the Dark Horse, the Dark Horse was no trade. I don't think I had to trade anything. Or did I? Where the hell the white, oh, the white Mustang, white Mustang went to the, uh, <laughs> the white Mustang went for the Raptor 37. That just happened here, you know, a little over two weeks ago. But I'm, but I'm lost on my GT. What did I give up? What did I give up to get that car? Did I have to give anything up? That's where the danger lies, is adding cars. So I definitely added, I hope the wife isn't watching, right? She's like, what? You added more cars this year? Oh, my God. Like, yeah, I know, right, right, yeah, I know. It's not forever, honey. Yeah, I know. So as her friends listen to my YouTube channel and then reach out and say, hey, guess what? I got a dirty secret for you. And I think that's what goes on, believe me or not. So kind of lost on, and then remember, <laughs> we, we traded the smoke show for the plum crazy charger inside the garage here only to turn around and buy it back with putting in the in my daughter's primary name to get that deal done that's why we get that deal done nobody understands the deal wasn't going to be go down i got creative and my daughter being the primary got the deal bought nobody was buying that deal otherwise that car couldn't have got bought back so some people are like oh your daughter can't afford that well yeah right but at the same time um, she's building her credit and making it work. So here's the, the plum crazy. So, and then you come back here to the dark horse and the dark horse was, uh, I, once again, I don't think what the hell did I give up? Eh, it's just, wow. Wow. what did I give up? Yeah. Did, did I give up the white Mustang? Oh, that's right. So I got it backwards. So the white Mustang was, was sacrificed for this, the dark horse. And I think, Jesus Christ, wow, wow, oh man, just to, no, the white Mustang was sacrificed for the Bronco, Jesus Christ, man, the, the uh, Ford Raptor 37, the blue Charger Hellcat Red Eye that was sitting in here was sacrificed, which I'm sure some people are like, you're nuts, you should never have sold that Dodge Charger. Yeah, I know, I hear you, but uh, whatever. So we just have talked about the cars. And in so many ways, I feel like there's probably a transaction of a cars that are in my driveway here that something else is missing on a deal that I can't remember. So here, here's the running joke. If you, if you look at my video a year ago and you look at my driveway, what are you going to find in my driveway that was here a year ago? I mean, sincerely. So I wonder who's, I wonder who my channel is really watching my channel and is going to reach out and say, I know there's one, two, three, four. Okay, I see four, five. So with vehicles, there's five vehicles that were here a year ago. I wonder if you know which ones those are. But I went through a lot of stuff right now, if you can pay attention to all the jibber job here. So from a year ago to today, there's five uh, vehicles uh, still here, which, okay, and everything else is new. Now we talk about the motorcycles. Well, the motorcycles are in the trailers. So like in this motor, this trailer here, you've got a CVO um, Road Glide that I bought last December of last year. So that wasn't a purchase this year. I got a CB650R in there that I bought twice. So that's in there. Then you go over this other trailer, and you've got the Chief Bobber, got the Chief Bobber in there, the CB. So that's, no, that was last year. So in the trailer, you've got a CB1000R in there and the CB650. So there's two of the motorcycle uh, deals, but I'm sure there's something else in there without me opening it up. And I'll have the CT125 trail bike that's in there. Um, so I'll just say in those two trailers, there's probably, I say, three three motorcycles that I bought this past year. But but the Fury, remember, the Fury was traded back in for the CB1000R 
The DCT 1100, I think it was traded for the uh, CB650R, I think. But I can't run just that. And then you come in the shop here. So say there's three bikes. And then you come in here. And here's all new stuff here. Because you've got the, the Honda. I had a Honda Foreman a tan color a year ago. Now the Rubicon replaced it. So that's new. The KTM used to be a Honda CRF 300L. That's gone. You got the FTR. You got the Honda Gold Wing. So what do we just count? Three motorcycles and trailer. Three more. There are six. Um, the, the, the Sport Chief. The Sport Chief was bought, and I gave it back. That's seven. And then I bought the Triumph. That's eight. The Pursuit is nine motorcycles. Then you come back here, and we have the uh, Harley CBO. That's 10. The Breakout's 11. I bought the um, Lowrider, what's that, 12. I bought that when we were down in Florida back in June and July. So that's 12 right off the tip of my tongue. And I'm just trying to think outside the box here. That Okay, so if you looked at my shop a year ago and you walked in my shop, what is still here that was here a year ago? And... I'd have to say nothing. And if you go to the trailers, if the Street Bob was still here, then that, that would be one thing. But in the trailers, um, yeah, it'd only be it would be basically the chief, the the, uh, the chief um, Bobber, and the CVO Harley Davidson. So my wife has told her friends and family that she has witnessed the whole fleet change in front of her eyes. <laughs> Do you believe her? I'm not lying to you. She'll tell you, yeah, yeah, Iceman, he had all these Ram trucks, all these Jeeps, all these Dodges, and then poof, all of a sudden, it's all Ford. It's all, I'm out embellishing here. I went all Ford back in 2017, 18, 19, where it was all the the, uh, the trucks, the SUVs, Expedition, Explorer, uh, F-150, F-250, F-350, F-450, uh, Ranger trucks, um, the Mustangs. And, and all the Mopar stuff disappeared. So the, so it just it was like just a... And once again, if you looked at my YouTube channel, I don't see... I just really wasn't doing that much. And yeah, it's a long video. It's all me trying to recall all these transactions. And we, we my daughter texted me all these transactions. I got to look at that and see. So anyways, what five vehicles were here a year ago? I wonder, I wonder who on my channel will reach out and they can say what five vehicles... Did you see that we're here a year ago? And so that'll be very interesting. Let's get up here to see the puppies. And yeah, recall. Who doesn't have memory lapse? Who doesn't have the challenge of recalling things that is uh, it's challenging as you progress in life? And is it because you just continue to get so much information that you, <laughs> it's just information overload? I gotta get some water. And it's, it's warm. I just can't get over how warm it is up here. And uh, heater on. That was a lot of walking around. I think for sure my YouTube channel, I definitely get some exercise in the morning. And I walk around. <laughs> Woo! I get my water. It's I'm thirsty. Sorry, I have to do it in front of you, but golly. Hmm. There you go, Mr. Willow Pillow. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, let me look at my phone as we're on this as I try to recall everything and see what I missed. Didn't miss. Oh my gosh. Make sure you guys are really like, wow. La da da da. D D D D. Information overload. Which I'll tell you it's a state of times. Oh my gosh. So my phone is all locked up. What is the odds of this? What is the odds of me? Where my phone's locked up. It just doesn't end. It does not end. Technology. Do you ever just want to take this thing and throw it out the window? Beyond believable. Beyond believable. My phone is totally listening to me. It's probably listening to me. I mean, duh. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Here it is. Okay, I finally got it to work. What a joke. All right. Holy crap, kid. Where is the information? You've now texted me 50 times in one day. So now... I'm going back from days and days. All right, so here we go. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you take it, anybody? Can you take it? Have you turned off the TV yet? So the daughter here is showing right here, if you can see it. So the daughter here says, so CVO Roguelide, yep. Oh, the Fast Johnny. Remember the Fast Johnny? <laughs> it was wow. Uh, the Lowrider ST, the Breakout, Indian Pursuit, Honda Rebel 1100. Honda Afro Twin, I think that's that's not right. So that's not correct. Super Chief, Honda Fury. Oh, the Honda Goldwing non-tour is in that trailer. Ha! <laughs> I've got a Honda Goldwing. Didn't even, did I say that? I thought I said that CVO, CB650. No, but in the one trailer, it's the Honda Goldwing and the CB650. In the other trailer, it's the CVO in the, in the uh, Super Chief. No, the, the Chief Bobber. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the Honda 1000, CB1000. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, Honda Fury, Honda Goldwing, Honda Trail, Honda 650, Honda 1000, Honda Rubicon. We're just doing the bikes. Honda Rubicon four-wheeler, Honda Goldwing, the new one I just got, Indian FTR, the Jeep Wagoneer, the Grand Cherokee, the Gladiator, the Challenger Smoke Show, two purchases in one year. Bought it, sold it, bought it back. The Gold Rush Challenger, okay, so technically I sold that car and then I bought it back. So technically... That is another sale, per se. Um, the Ford Bronco Black, Ford Raptor 35, talked about that. The Ford Power Boost, the F-250, the Plum Crazy, the Mustang, uh, two Mustangs, and the Ford Bronco Wild Track, and the Super Chief, and the Triumph Rocket, and the Raptor 37. Then, if you want to add in the KTM Dirt Bike um, and the Honda Four-Wheeler. So, if you take all of that, that's like 33. That's like 33 purchases. So if you take 33 divided by, um, I'm going to say 50 weeks. Is that right? No. We'll do, we'll do 33 divided by 12 months. That's 2.75 vehicles per month. So basically that's just about a vehicle every 10 days. That, But I took a time out. If you really watch the channel, I did kind of disappear on buying the cars. Everything's so down for a while, and then I got back into the addiction to doing it back again. But that's that's beyond believable. So, borderline every ten days, I've been buying something. <laughs> Are the white suits here yet? Right? Are the white suits here? So, uh, there's the the review of the recall. You know, me trying to recall what's happened this past year, and I think that I did a pretty good job on that as far as. Uh, what I can remember, recall. But here's something that's interesting. The New York Times is now going to go to the State of Times, which, yeah, does anybody remember the recall on Gavin Newsom in California, how they tried to recall him? Anybody remember, you know, the whole last election, how somebody wanted to be recalled and blah, 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 uh, you know, gets, yeah, they, you talk all day long, that stuff. But what's really interesting is the open AI, it's, it's major news. New York Times I'm sure people have seen it as well out there, but New York Times, the, you know, the paper that's been around forever, that's so many think leans further to the left side than the right side, or how you know how does the building, you know, which which way is the building leaning in New York City? So, anyways, they uh, they're filing a lawsuit against uh, Microsoft and um, OpenAI, Sam Altman, because of um, they're, they're they're stealing property from them meaning information. So there's a fair use act. There's a fair use bill in our country. Is it, is it, I guess it's the internet where you can use information and it's not per se copyright violations. But what's going on is this new chat GPT, the generative pre-trained transform, which I've talked about so much on my YouTube channel, artificial intelligence, open AI, they are going after them because they feel like they're creating this artificial intelligence through all of their their proprietary knowledge of journalism that they've had for, you know, how many years. And now all this information is being fed into this artificial intelligence, and it's now making it where they're seeing less people come to their websites. People are gating information now through 
um, open AI versus going to New York Times. And all these journalists and others feel like they're being their rights are being violated because they're stealing all their information and they're reusing it to enrich themselves. And and so how you know how is that? It's going to be very it's going to be very interesting. I've talked about the Writers Guild, all the directors and uh, all the uh, writers and all the actors that that just went on strike because they're so worried about this artificial intelligence overtaking their their careers. And that's the same thing that's going on now at New York Times. They see a painting on the wall. This new technology is going to take away their uniqueness to bringing content to you and I, where OpenAI can do it faster and maybe more clarified. And, and this is where it gets really kind of murky. And is it um, an agenda? Is it favored? Is it, is it, you know, the propaganda? Well, how do you know? How does that? How's that handled? So, the Microsoft get this. Microsoft has invested thirteen billion dollars into Open AI, and they now have forty nine percent stake in Open AI. With all of the deal, is they're going to have the profit sharing from this artificial intelligence. So, it, I mean, it's such. It's such. You just you just shake your head. It's it, it's as if. Somebody comes to my house and steals my car, and then they go use it to uh, to either sell it or rent it out or whatever they may do. And so they've taken my you know my thing to then enrich themselves with my thing. And that's in so many ways. If you think about it, that's what artificial intelligence is doing. It's taking all this information from others that created it that they're now using the knowledge to put into their own world. And then for you to have access to that knowledge, you got to go through them, but they took it from them. I mean, wow. Is it, I mean, is it, it's We are living in such interesting times. I mean, we really are. I mean, this just what starts to play out. And then as we know, it turns into the control. It's the media control. And, but here's the biggest thing. Who can recall you know, where we are with so much information and technology. I mean, it's, it's, can you recall what you did yesterday? I mean, <laughs> sincerely, as you get older in life, you're kind of like, yeah, what the, well, the easy answer would be like, yeah, I went to work and did the same thing I did the day before and the day before and the day before. That's a pretty easy answer for most people that have a real life and real job. It's kind of the same thing. It's a recall, a redo day in, day out. And that's the challenge. That's what I tell young people is it isn't all about having all the brains in the world. It's all about can you recall to do the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out. And that's, you know, that's very challenging. I'm going to leave it at that. Appreciate everybody watching my channel. A lot of talk, and I know I talk a lot, but I enjoy talking, sharing the, uh, you know, who out there. I'm just curious. I mean, I might hear... Uh, I'm not on a mission for the Guinness Book of World Record. I mean, that is not what's going on. It's just my incredible challenges of life and my addictions to cars and motorcycles. And I know that it won't, it can't last forever because as I get older in life, eventually, you know, am I riding all these different motorcycles? And as I progress, yeah, my finances and the other things have to be in order for me to eventually be able to say, okay, I'm not working today and I've got things in order. Well, I don't have to work. So the point of that is, who else out there knows of somebody that has bought 33 vehicles this past year? And if you go then from 2022 to 2023, there's 30 vehicles last year. So I, I outdid myself this year, never even planning to do that. So I'm at 63 vehicles in two years, just in two years. So when I tell people, I probably am getting close to 500 vehicle purchases. I know some people are like, there's no, there's no way, dude, there's no way. Okay, if you watch my channel, between now and the end of the next year, would I maybe buy another 10, 20 vehicles next year? I mean, I could be at 100 vehicle purchases, potentially, maybe, on my YouTube channel, if I continue to do what I'm doing the next few years. And that would just be in a, a basically a three-year, four-year time span. So you're talking about me buying cars for like 40 years. Wow. Yeah, who else has done this? And once again, I'm not a wholesaler, not a car dealer, none of that. I'm not buying and flipping cars. I just buy cars and trade them back in. I'm not that smart. Yeah, right. You heard me. Long video. It's setting to be too damn long, Mr. Iceman. I got to go. I got to get something else. 
Well, some people ride down the road. I think they maybe enjoy the video because they're driving on the road in traffic over, you know, whatever. It's just conversation you listen to as you're going down the road. Because, uh, you know, what's the biggest challenge driving on the road besides getting mundane? And what do you do, right? Especially you're working. So that's it. Leave it at that. I wonder if anybody knows which five vehicles were sitting in my garage and property one year ago. But then what was sitting in my property a year ago? Could you actually tell me? What vehicles were sitting here that I've replaced? And I, and I just went through a list of a lot of vehicles. And oh my gosh, wow, geez. Hey, God bless. Have a great day. <laughs> Stay tuned. And I'll shut the hell up. Sorry for the final language. Have a great day.